speaker is Chad Ober. Chad is with Civic Innovation YYC at the City of Calgary, a program that creates new ways for citizens and businesses to share, collaborate, and test ideas for improving city services. Please welcome to the stage, Chad Ober. Thank you. Um, thank you uh, for, for having me. Um, and, and really, thank you for allowing me to share the stage with uh, some really amazing speakers tonight. Uh, it's been it's been fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. Um, we can we can start. Uh, so, after studying architecture, working in architecture firms for about a decade, and now having worked in municipal government for almost as long, you could say the idea of transparency is a really important one. Although my relationship with the concept is uh, admittedly somewhat complex. In architecture, the bar is set pretty high. This quote speaks to both a literal and figurative handling of transparency. It also implies that if you do your job right, the end result is so clear, so unequivocal, that it's somehow not only correct, but magnificent. You know, so no pressure or anything. <laughs> At the city, I got my start working with the Alberta Building Code, which in its own way also attempts to achieve a state of clarity and implies both correctness and accuracy, either through a prescriptive recipe to follow, like this one, or performance standards to be met. The idea is to be as unambiguous as possible and open about how decisions are made. So in both cases, there seems to be a relationship between things as they are and things as they're perceived to be and that transparency could be about reducing the distance between the two. It also implies that if you've done your job right, you arrive at this self-actualized state of correctness and or compliance, uh, depending on how you look at it. Yet, I wouldn't call this a perfect definition by any means. Seeing things as they really are is really hard, and it seems like the closer you get, the more stuff tries to get in the way. Literally everything from smudgy glasses to those floaty things on your eyeballs and lots of figurative things in between. Let's look at a few more examples, just how complicated this can get. Here, the answer you're going to get to this question is clear, but it may lack validity or accuracy. Even if someone calibrates by saying a zero is no pain and a 10 is getting hit by a train, you're still left wondering what those scenarios mean to different people. I guess it's better than not trying at all. So, imagine arriving at the bakery to pick up the cake you ordered for your friend's 30th birthday. <laughs> The instructions were followed word for word. So what else were you expecting? The outcome here is perfectly accurate, correct, and unambiguous, but I'm pretty sure there's something wrong here. And I don't even know how to explain these two examples. They're both in their own way somehow correct and incorrect, accurate and inaccurate, valid and invalid. Can a gluten-free cookie that contains gluten even exist? Again, I think they're being honest about it. Whereas at the farthest end of this spectrum, we have deliberate opacity, encryption, rampant dishonesty, and of course, alternative facts. We used to call them lies. Right after the presidential inauguration, the failing Dallas Stars were obviously grasping at straws to make up for what was a very boring and terrible game. Sad. <laughs> In architecture, we find these same digressions in varying degrees all over the place. Misinterpretations, mistakes, things being taken too literally, contradictions, outright lies and obfuscations. All this leading to results that fall short of correctness and magnificence in some fashion. Speaking of soiled rooms, take this hot mess for example as it's been broken down for us on the McMansion Hell website. A confusing read of proportions, symbols and fake materials clearly trying to be perceived as something that it isn't by drawing on an essential historical order that just isn't there. And while McMansions are an easy target, uh, here I've taken one of my own projects and given it the same treatment. Visible from airplanes, I still think it's the best damn cellular antenna church steeple edition in the city. But admittedly, who's kidding who? Was it dishonest to try to blend the cell tower in with the existing building? Should it have just been its own thing? We're seeing so many confounding factors here that the working definition I'm proposing is really breaking down. Uh, perhaps absolute transparency doesn't exist. Nothing is truly honest, truly authentic. Nothing is entirely as it seems to the point where a cathedral may not be any more correct a place of worship than a Costco warehouse. <laughs> a part of government too knows that it really isn't fooling anyone with complex processes and documents. 
A lot of words are often used to create a high resolution version of what's really only a crude sketch to begin with. And instead of trying to understand what people actually need, it just keeps adding more detail, which gives rise to more ambiguity, not less. So what's the way forward? For me, it's about wading into the mud and taking a bath. No longer worrying about correctness, magnificence, and clarity. It's about being open to what sparks and signals emerge from juxtapositions, misreadings, ambiguous spaces, and unintended consequences, because I think this is closer to who I am. And maybe all of us actually are. There's this idea of perfection, and we spend most of our lives trying to fight the forces of atrophy and chaos that would soil it. It's okay to be who we are. And to want to understand that fully, for all of its messiness, rather than trying to sanitize the situation or distill it down. And that's led me to where I am now. A spectrum between endpoints has been, relate, have been replaced by a slurried stream of consciousness. This is a little Instagram project to make my own virtual wonder cabinet of real or unreal artifacts. A bit of dishonesty, a bit of kabuki, a scrim rather than a veil, and blurring the lines rather than concealing them. And at the city, I'm also thrilled to be part of an amazing team uh, that's helping make government more inclusive and open to new ideas. We're embracing design, attempting to decode complexity, celebrating the chaos that comes of earnest empathy and recognizing the potential risk of not trying something instead of the other way around. And it's here that I've actually begun to find a new kind of convergence. The concept of putting roller skates on a dragonfly like you just saw might actually seem kind of stupid, but it's just these kinds of collisions that lead to new things, like researchers putting microchips on insects and turning them into drones that will search for survivors in disasters. So I started with a quote that I wasn't all that comfortable with, and it only took 18 more slides to leave you with one that I think is a much better fit. This notion of being present, flexible, and connected seems like a much better way to approach transparency. And on that note, I'm just going to close with my sincere thanks to all of you for taking this clearly muddled ride. <laughs>